All right, I'm here with Freddie Camacho. You are sitting in your car in uh, SoCal, you in Southern California? Uh, Northern California. Northern California. What's the, what's the delineation? I think it's, most people cut it at San Luis Obispo, I believe. Chuck Liddell from San Luis Obispo, huh? <laughs> so, the, you know, you and I were talking really briefly, but the question I have is, so your, your new affiliate is GFY CrossFit. It's, well, that was the original and approved original affiliate. As okay. It was GFY CrossFit, but I got into a legal dispute with someone who actually owns the copyright to GFY. Okay. So, th th you know, it was a little confusing as it was going up there. My impression was, hey, we, we're GFY CrossFit under the impression it's good for you. But there's like a, you know, it's a, there's a hidden meaning in there as well. Is there not? So it literally was GFY CrossFit. That's what we got approved. And we were never going to say anywhere in writing or anything what GFY stood for. Okay. And, and then what happened what had happened was <laughs> this guy owns GFY gear and he's actually out of San Jose. So he contacted me and goes, Hey, I heard you're going to start this GFY CrossFit. Just see, so you know, I just want people to know that we're not the same business. And I'm like, Oh no, no, no not a problem, bro. Uh, me and China will pump you up on social media. He sells MMA clothing, right. And fight gear. And uh, so I go and get my affiliate approved, my insurance, every, everything. I bought the URL. I started my email accounts. Two weeks later, I reached out to him so that uh, China and I could pump up his business, like I said. And then he's all, hey, by the way, my lawyer told me that you can't use an NGFY. So, so now, you, now uh, you're officially I, good for you? Now we're officially good for you, CrossFit, because I ended up talking with Dale about trademark infringement and all that stuff and he's all hey you could go and fight it but you're just going to spend a lot of money and you could win or you could not win so we ended up just changing it but between you and i and a few listeners what did the gfy what were you gonna what did you think it stood for what did it stand for to crypt freddie camacho uh get freddie yoked <laughs> yeah. uh, good food yay so uh, no, a, another interesting story there's if, if I think if you Google Freddy's Revenge, mm -hmm. that's your workout. You was that you and Boz? Uh, it was me, Boz, Jason Kalipa, Jolie Gentry. Um, who else was there? And then what was that? Remember the girl that competed in the games, the real young girl? Was it Callista? She was around back then. Yeah, she competed in like 2007 at the games. I think. Okay. Or, or 2008, I'm not sure. But I don't even know when Freddy's Revenge came out. Was it like 2009? That was, it was, it was back long enough that it was too heavy for me to do. I think it was like push press at like 185. The funny thing was that Buddy programmed that workout because he wanted to give me a chance to win a workout and I took last. <laughs> you, well, you're, you were surrounded by some heavy hitters, but you know, that's really what I wanted to talk to you primarily about. You've been involved in CrossFit since forever. 06, I started. You, March 28th, 06. You remember the date? Do you remember the workout? I do. It was uh, five rounds of, was it seven push press? And I probably didn't really do a push press. And 10 L sit-ups, I mean, L pull-ups or something like that. Something similar to that. I always go back and look at it. Um, I wasn't commenting yet on dot com then, but that's I started following dot com on that day. What brought you to dot com? So back in the day, you know, people take this for granted now if they're listening. It's like there's a CrossFit, you'll drive past one on your way to work. But when you and I found it, I mean I found it through jujitsu and we're like goofy, same same as you. That's similar. So we had one world martial arts and fitness. And one day I was rolling with our um, jitsu instructor and I said, he's a little guy and he's so strong. And I was like, yeah, dude, what are you doing for your strength and fitness? And uh, he's all, I, I do CrossFit. And I'm like, what the fuck is CrossFit? And uh, he's all, go to the website. So that night I went to the dot com website and I was, I was, I'd been working out since I'm 13 years old. You know what I mean? So I've always been a gym rat. And uh, I just started reading like every night I went on for probably like about, 
I don't know, two weeks or 10 days looking at the site every night. And then one day I just went and built a pull-up structure and bought a cheap ass weight set from Sears and put it in our facility and CrossFit One World was born. So that you were running your own affiliate in someone else's martial arts school at the time. No, it was, it was my, it was, I was one of the owners. Of okay. So you were one of the owners and you were doing CrossFit to benefit your jujitsu and your martial arts. Um, I was, so I was a fighter and the guys that were my ring guys and they were my martial arts instructors. We were all Krav Maga guys. We started one world and then we had like a fit to fight conditioning class and I just turned it into CrossFit. So, and, and being so close to, you know, Santa Cruz, you know, anyone in California at the time, did you just immediately seek out HQ? Is that when you, did you go to your level one pretty quickly? <laughs> Dude, I went in that that July, and I remember I I freaking back then you called CrossFit. You yeah. only did like a seminar once every couple of months. You know what I mean? So I called them, and I left a message and was like, "Hey, I'm, my name's Freddie Camacho. I live up here in the East Bay. I want to go to one of these level ones and get certified and open up an affiliate. Can you guys give me a call back?" And dude, I remember the exact spot where I was at, pumping gas in my car when my cell phone rang. And Annie Sakamoto was on the other line. I was all like, oh, my God, one of the nasty girls is calling me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like. To this day, I remember it. So, And then I did my level one in San Diego. So this is 2006. So we're talking 13 years ago. I mean, I'm going to put this lightly. You were already old. Yeah. No, I was. I was. <laughs> but, this I is mean, very true. I started when I was 41, I guess. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say you're the age I am now, but you but you show up and you're a monster in the CrossFit world at, at 40, 41 years old. Well, that, yeah, the pool was a lot shallower then. <laughs> right. What when you go take your level one back then? Did you walk in and was it? It's almost like you're going to an, a, a jujitsu competition, right? Like you're eyeballing each other. Like who am I gonna beat? Who can? Who, who's who looks fitter than me? Yeah. Was well, that what you it, know, I came from that whole like you know, kind of the bodybuilding background as far as exercising went. But luckily I had a conditioning background from the fighting and doing the martial arts stuff. Um, so I, was, I went in there, I was like, hey, it was the first time I ever touched a wall ball. Like I'd never touched a Dynamax ball before. And I volunteered to do the, the max reps of, I would just grab somebody, then I volunteered, I did like 50 reps my very first time touching a, a, a med ball. And then they picked me, to be the guy that goes up against Nicole and the overhead squat thing. Do you remember that? Yeah. That? We used to do the overhead squat or, or coach would be like, Hey, somebody come up here and press this bar. And it was usually like 95 and then yep. Nicole would jerk it and she would just destroy anybody. Oh yeah. She crushed me. I think I did like, like seven and they were as ugly as they are now then. So they're still ugly, <laughs> but she just smacked me. But I had fun, dude. That was back when coach was doing the, doing the level ones and, I think it was Nicole's first time that they had like a flow master. So she was the original flow master and she was like trying to keep coach on point with his lecture times and all that. And then they like broke up into stations and, and uh, we, I mean, we went over, we had a burpee station. We had, a, I got my first ring muscle up at my level one. Um, yeah. It was how to climb a rope. There was a rope climbing station. It was just all these different stations. They had all these people there. So it was crazy. You know, and for me, because I found CrossFit in 2007, you were one of the people that I looked like. I was like, oh, that's Freddie Camacho. You know, <laughs> like that would, to me was really like, you, I, you were like my Annie. I mean, of course, Annie was still Annie, but I was, you were one of the superstars and seeing the Freddie's Revenge and you hanging out there, you know, you became one of the superstars. You, you started coaching on the staff as well. Yeah, yeah. I took, back then, it was just like you should. I started just calling him and going, hey, can I go to this <laughs> level one and help out? Can I go and help out? Can I go and help out? And it wasn't until I worked at a level one that was law enforcement only with Andy Stump and Joey Gentry. And we were in, I think it was in Colorado. I mean, I would fly myself to these things and just go hang out. You know what I mean? And uh, Andy got me paid. That was my first paid gig. He's all, no, you got to get paid. And then I was on staff for about, I don't know, a year and a half. So. Lots yeah, times. we've had a couple of people on staff and we've all kind of told our story on how we got there. But back in the day, it was just like, if you were fit and you lived in the Santa Cruz area, 
show up. I mean, you, Spieler talked about it, Mike G, where it's like, hey, we just keep showing up. And eventually they decided to pay people. Yeah, we, we kept getting those colored T-shirts before we got paid. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you I brought mean, it up. Kinda helped, it kind of helped because I hosted level ones and level twos at One World. So. Yeah, you were one of the first boxes outside of HQ that would actually, where they would come in and host the seminars. Yeah, it was, that, that was a lot of good memories of those seminars too. So you, you brought up your overhead squat against Nicole. You are notorious for poor shoulder mobility. Uh-huh. What? Uh, that's the way I like it. <laughs> now, well, I was going to say, at this point, is it just a choice? Well, yeah, of course it's a choice. I mean, I'm sure I can work on my mobility and get better at it, but I just, I just don't care. I can, I can gut through it. I'll just never be, I just why my wife can overhead squat a boatload more than I can. But you've been to the games, what, three times as a Masters? Four. Four, to, four times as a Masters? Well, Did definitely that... speaking, I've been to the game seven times when I was a Masters athlete the entire time. <laughs> that's, that's true. So you, you went, you know, because the old school stats are actually not on the website. The website right. just lists you as 12, 15, and 16. Yeah, as I, was there, I was there 11 the first, the first year. Well, it's technically the second year they had Masters at the Games, but the first year that they did open qualifier for it was 2011. So but, 11, 12, and then 15, and 16. And, and prior to that, you just showed up in 2007 and 8, right? Play to pay or pay to play. <laughs> <laughs> What what place do you what place did you come in in two thousand seven and two thousand eight? Uh, I was eleventh in two thousand seven, and then in two thousand eight, I'm not sure if I cracked the top twenty. There was a lot more people there in two thousand eight. Are Are you in the movie? Are you in every second counts? Uh, like real brief, you can see me in the crowd or anything like that. But yeah, it's been not, a while. Yeah. It's pretty incredible that in 2007, you were the 11th fittest person. I mean, now it's like, you know, like now it's like Patrick Bellner or, you know, Fikowski or whatever. But in 2007, it was you. Yeah, that, that is kind of funny when you think about it. <laughs> so uh. I've heard you tell this, but I think it's really funny for the listeners. You've told the story about, so the, what was it? The third event became the Hopper event, right? Right. Yeah, and they, yeah. you know, tumbled the, the, the big roaster that's still out in a row missing. It was a 1K row followed by uh, seven push jerks at 135, 20 pull-ups for five rounds. Right. That and was when, when the ball came out of the hopper and he said heavy push, push jerk and 135 was considered heavy. Yeah. Now it would be the lightweight, right? And, and they – I, I, Definitely. Well, they repeated it maybe four or five years later. And I, and I think the way Castro put it is the time cap – when they redid it in 12 or 13 at the games was faster than anyone even finished that year. Yeah. Yeah. It was, so, it was pretty brutal. But, but the story is you're in the same heat as Spieler, right? Yeah. He's in the, he's in the lane right next to me. And uh, I just remember, I'm like, Oh, this is that Spieler dude. And we're in the middle of the workout. And what happened was I kept walking from the barbell to his, pull-up rig and they kept no no go to that one go to yours right so I had to go to the one next to it and then I don't know there was still like at least two rounds left or a round left I'm not sure exactly fuzzy memories but I remember I walked back and they're like oh you can use whatever bar you want and I'm all oh man a little fucker quit <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's the mind what went through my obviously I was wad drunk but uh he was already done <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The first thought is that guy quit. Meanwhile, yeah. you know, in yep. a similar situation at my level one, there was a guy named Joe DeGain. I don't know if you know Joe, but he's on staff, longtime flow master. And we were in the same heat as Fran. And I was like, oh, I'm, I just, you know, that guy stopped. Meanwhile, he was done. And I was still like, <laughs> my, my 15s. So yeah, at, at 53, you're fitter now, right? Than, than you were when you were 40. Would you, is that a fair statement? Uh, yeah, I would say probably 2008 through 2012, I was my fittest. So definitely fitter than I was in my early 40s. And are you still trying to make a push to get back to the games? That you, you're probably at the high end of that 50 to 54 age group right now, right? Yeah. It's kind of, if you look at the years that I made it when I had to qualify, 2011 2012 i was the front end of that age group 
and then 15, 16, I was the front end of that age group. I'm still in one more year in this age group. And then next year, so guess, I guess it's the open starts in October, right? Yeah, the, new, so, the next open. Yeah, I'll be able to, to do the, huh, I'll be able to go to the next age group, 55. So you so, age up for the October open? Yeah, I will. I'll still be 54, but I turn 54 in like a week or something like that. Yeah, and so then, there's a, I mean, that's really the sentiment with all the Masters athletes. They're like, you have one, maybe two good years in each category before you age up or before yeah, you're a little too old and then the fresh blood comes in. Yeah. But then there's guys proving that wrong for sure. I mean, it's all, I think it's all a matter of how much you want to train because now it's like even master's age guys, it's like a full-time job almost. You know what I mean? I always give Ron shit, Ron Ortiz, cause he's a firefighter and I'm like, Hey bro, why don't you promote? He's like, well, because my house only gets like one call or two calls a day so I can work out all day long. You know what I mean? I'm all like, damn, I hate him. <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean, I've talked to Ron and the volume that this guy does, and he's probably about, he's your age, right? He, yeah. he would destroy me. And I'm 40, 41, yeah. right? And I mean, that, and it's incredible. And he, yeah, he, granted, he's at a, at a pretty easy firehouse. He's still, you know, lacking some sleep, I'm sure, but it's impressive what him and a few of those other guys have done. No, absolutely. I, I mean, it's like that level of, and I don't still, man, CrossFit's hard, man. It was 13 years now. I don't want to, I've been basically trying to compete in it for 12 of those 13 years because we didn't have the games when I started. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't know I was going to get into competitive CrossFit and it's work. You know? I don't know that I can do enough hours to make it back, even when I age up. So we'll see. I'm still you know, working a job. So. And now you're still a police officer? No, I, I retired in October. Okay, so what's your current job? I work for like the security management team over at Tesla. So you're still doing some, you know, security and apprehending yeah. the bad guys type of work. I assume CrossFit is, it was super beneficial those last 10 years for you on the force. Oh, no, absolutely. Basically, my... You know, I started CrossFit in 2006, so I've been a cop for about five, six years already. Um, and like I said, I was always into fitness and being fit and training. Um, but I think that CrossFit definitely made a huge difference on my fitness level. Not only that, your stress. You know what I mean? Like, they say it's one of those, like, the most stressful jobs out there. And, you know, people, some people just don't handle that stress, but. I don't know, man. I think because of my fitness, I always just took work as a, with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice. I mean, I'm friendly with a lot of police officers from the box or on staff. There's still some people that do that. And I, I'm sure it's nice to not have to have that concern. Like, if it's a foot chase or if this gets rough, my fitness will handle it. No, absolutely. And I just think, you know, working out for anybody, not just in law enforcement or anything, but it's a great stress relief, right? You know, if you're working out regular, like, you don't meet a lot of people that go and regularly go to CrossFit boxes that are basket stress cases. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 I haven't in all my 13 years of owning a gym, I haven't really met any really whacked out, stressed out people that come to the gym regularly. Now with your training for 13 years, you know, I've had, I spoke to Austin Maliolo and James Hobart about it because they kind of are changing their paths right now. They went from competitive to chilling out a little bit. How do you stay motivated? Well, I have this wife named China. I don't want her to dump me. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that motivating for you? I mean, you know, we'll talk about China. You're married to a games athlete, and this year she's on the Mayhem team. Mm -hmm. And I just – today's – the episode that went up live today was actually Tasia, her, her teammate. So is that what motivates you to – I don't want to say beat your wife because I don't think you can beat her, but I mean, oh, hell no. to hang. I used to. <laughs> was there a point in time you were fitter than her? Uh, yeah, when she first started. Like when we, we got, we started dating in 2010. So I could beat her. Not, not in everything, but in, in things. I could beat her in some workouts. Did I think you? the first time we ever worked out together, she showed up at One World and we worked out. And I think I beat her that day. She would know because she remembers fucking everything. Um, but, I think I beat her. I'm sure you bring that up to her often. Hey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I don't bring it up often enough. I can't remember. 
<laughs> so did you meet her at CrossFit? Uh, so you know uh, Austin Bejubing, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, he was, he, she was working out at his gym, and he was programming for me and Kalipa and a couple of other people, and she got on to the program. I saw her name on the thing, and I just hit her up, and an email was all, hey, I'm really kind of curious of what he's programming for you. I want to see what he's doing for a girl that would be different from us, and then we just went from there, and here we are today. Yeah, it's like, turned- I can't believe it's already almost nine years later. Turns out he, she was probably getting the same programming as you, because she was, yeah, was just pretty close. Yeah, just as fit and strong. Yeah, Austin is a for the listeners a flow master on staff, and I think I don't know if he still is, but he was Kalipa's basically his programmer and coach for the for the years Kalipa was competing individually. So they both did their, they both did their first workout at my gym. Jason and China. J- uh, Jason and Austin. Oh, I know Austin. Austin did his first workout at One World, and then he ended up bringing – he worked out at Globo Gym with Jason. He ends up, like, on another date bringing Jason down to my gym, and they did Fran, and they both did it with jumping pull-ups. Funny story. And then a year later, Kalipa wins the CrossFit Games. With a Fran-esque workout, too, in 2008. Yeah. And that was the chest to bar one. So was it intimidating? Well, I guess it wouldn't have been intimidating because at the time when you started dating China, you were still fitter than her. Well, yeah. <laughs> how long did that how long did that last she's gonna be laughing <laughs> <laughs> so all right how long in your relationship with your now wife were you actually fitter than her probably a month or two because she was she was pretty incredible like i was there and i saw her get her first muscle up like and then the next day she did nasty girls you know what i mean like wow she's got she's got a uh a working mindset. I think it just comes from being a swimmer and growing up in a military family. Um, So she's got super fit, super, I mean, she, she managed the CrossFit games in less than a year of training. You know what I mean? And with a bum knee. And, and, and has been back numerous times. Yeah. What is she? Six times, seven times. I mean, I, I, I've dated, you know, and my wife is very fit, but I'm still stronger, you know, still fitter. But what's, what's that? How does that change the balance and the dynamic of a relationship? Uh, or does it well, not? For us, it, it didn't change anything for us. I mean, I'm just proud and happy for what she did. I mean, she made the games of the Tanner and she didn't make it back for, you know, three years in a row. It was brutal. I'm so, and just the fact that she even stayed in it because she was so close each time. So she's just always been inspiring for me. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think her being fitter than me is has changed anything so what what's the biggest lesson a man can take like if you were giving advice to all the male listeners about being supportive mm-hmm. just period regardless if it's go to your desire to go to the games because you've done a good job i mean i'm sure relationships have ended over less stress than than that like that's a stressful scenario yeah what, what, what's your one piece of advice like what what can i learn from that i man you just got to be supportive and and be ready for those highs and lows because <laughs> there's a lot of roller coaster ride there, right? So you have to be ready to buckle in and keep your hand in the car at all times. You know what I mean during the ride because it's it's pretty it's pretty intense. Yeah, there's not a you know one thing my well my wife yells at me because I and like most men it's like we want to give solutions and I've learned to just be like sorry you feel that way. Was, is there a lot of, like, there's no solution. Like, you didn't make it. All yeah. I can do is be your husband and be supportive, right? Right. It's funny because China, China trains by herself when she's home. I mean, she has some, uh, some friends that will do workouts and she scales them for them appropriately and stuff like that. But she does a lot of her work by herself. And a lot, often it'll be, like, during a, when a class is going on, our gym's 5,000 square feet, so there's plenty of room. But she'll have days when something's not going her way and she's, like, screaming or crying she'll cry she'll freaking throw things it's a really bad day when she throws something <laughs> and everybody else you can see like everybody else like they all turn to look at me like i'm supposed to do something and i just i just I just keep on going with what i'm doing i'm, I'm so used to it i'm on oh, let her go she's all right just let her be you know what i mean so it, has there been less stress for you now that she's going on the team 
um well we didn't have to do regionals this year you know what i mean since there wasn't regionals anyway or but like if she wasn't team she would be would have had to try and make it through a sanctional um then it would have been the stress of like the regionals so yeah way less stressful um i don't think that she's any less stressed because she doesn't want to end up being like the weak link on the team in any way but it's been a lot less stressful for me that's for sure yeah that was a similar thing that Tasia had said I was like well is team easier and she's like no because you don't want to let your team down it's different than when you go as an individual definitely now for you I want to talk a lot about just how aging has impacted and what some things that people listening can do not just for themselves but we get a lot of coaches listening Uh, you know so what can we do for this generation of people in their 40s to 60s to be smarter and make sure CrossFit is something that is sustainable and, and, you know, in line with Coach Glassman's push towards health versus only sport? I, I think that you have to accept and, and come up with a plan for that time, and it'll happen to everyone eventually, where you can't out-train that poor diet or you start to like, oh, whoa, I'm, I'm starting to gain a little weight or something like that, you know what I mean? Like. I was fortunate that I, that really hasn't started hitting me until like the last year, year and a half that I could always just out train and I love my poor diet or my, my love of beer and whatnot. And now I'm seeing that I can't. So you have to be able to adjust to that change. You have to accept it. You know what I mean? You have to accept that you're getting older. That's the other thing. It was so weird for me when I was like, wow, I'm not the best guy at the gym I'm at my own gym or, or wow, I can't do this workout rx i had to scale it you know what i mean so that's a hard thing for people to accept too and some people will actually quit you know rather than accept that go and find something else right rather than changing what they're doing to be smarter for their body it's like i'll give up yeah and i think you see that in any aspect in any sport but it it is is it have you seen whether it's specific workouts or specific lifts where you're just not where you were five, ten years I, ago? I, I'll be quite honest with you. I just don't really enjoy going to that dark place that's intensity anymore. I mean, that's what it really comes down to for me. Like, so I've been doing a lot more, like, cycling. I uh, just started getting into cycling since they, when they announced it at the, at the um, games. I was like, God, that looks like I should try that. And then I was like, wow, how did I never discover cycling earlier in my, my life? Um, I'm not really built for it, but – it's fun, but that, yeah, that intensity side of things is after 13 years, you know what I mean? Of pretty much working out, you know, five to six days a week. It's definitely taking a little toll on me. And I was like, I, that's the hard one for me. I don't know about other people. Like some guys just still love it. I t- chat with people online and, or on Facebook and things. And they're like, no, I, sh- I still like to go to that dark place. And for me, it's just, I haven't enjoyed it as much. So that's a huge thing that I've noticed for me. Well, and I, and I think it's okay for you, too. Not, I was talking to Marcus Philly, and he does a lot of this kind of hybrid bodybuilding type stuff. And he says part of the reason he does it is because people can't take that intensity day in and day out. It's not ideal for your body. Do you, how many days a week are you hitting CrossFit-type workouts? I would say, well, up until this week, for maybe like the last, I don't know, since I left the PD, I was only getting like maybe three days a, a weekend, but I'm going to try and start adding a little bit more on a regular basis, probably try and get it back to getting in five days a week and still trying to get in some cycling miles too. So it should be interesting. Is, is that because you're going to try to make it back to the 55s? I don't know. I'm always trying. You ain't trying, you're dying, right? So, <laughs> I, I think I have a realistic approach on it. Like, not sure that I'll ever make it back to the games again. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'd have to take a lot of guys out. <laughs> hey, you, you, at fifty-five, it's it's you, you never know, right? There's people that are that are finding this sport, sure, but you just need a, a couple of good workouts. Yeah, well, I always like fun, funny whenever I go to a competition. I always would find out which guys are the guys that only have like two or three years of CrossFit experience because those are the ones I'd always keep my eye out on because those are the ones that are still fresh 
and still love going to the pain cave on the regular all the time. And they would be the ones guys that I would always look out for. And, and often I was right. They would do really, really well. What aspect of owning a box do you enjoy the most? Um, the best part of owning a box is, I mean, well, there's always the people, you know what I mean? Like, I like, I like the coach still. It's like, for me, it's like performance art. I've always thought of it that way. So it's always like a show. And uh, it's, I just want everyone around me to, to have a good time. So that's the best part of owning a box for me is getting a coach and make sure that everyone's having a good time during class. And besides just moving well and performing well, but having a good time. So, so what are some things you do for that? So, if it, you know, if, if someone's listening, okay, how can I ensure, I mean, the name of the podcast is the best hour of their day. I fully agree with you. But what are some things you specifically do to make sure people get to, you know, good for you CrossFit and, and have a great hour? Um, I mean, I come up from like, a, you know, having been law enforcement, it's like, we're just smoking and joking all the time. Right. So basically that's the way I roll in class and like talk shit to people, but in a good fun way, you know what I mean? I'll call people out, but always in a good fun way. I, I, I don't think I've ever really ever, I don't know, I've pissed anybody off, but, um, I skirt the edge of that. <laughs> And, and so, it's it's culture, right? I mean, that's what we always tell people. Like if if that's the culture, you're gonna have the members that seek that out and love it. Yeah. And the people that don't, they they'll go to the box a mile away. Right. It's kind of we're kind of fortunate in our in our situation where we're at is our box is really more like an, an extension of our garage gym. Like so, we don't really need to make money at it as long as it's paying for itself, bills wise. We don't need. We're not, I have a job, you know what I mean? China's an athlete and doing her thing. Um, so we're kind of picky about who we sign up or who we let sign up and stuff like that. I mean, so we've got a nice, cool little culture. People know what to expect and how we run things. Um, so that's worked out really well for us. What have you seen change in the, in the CrossFit world in the last 13 years as far as coaching goes? You know, it's, it's funny is that I visit a lot of boxes and I try and take classes. I just think that there's, I think that the quality of coaching now is probably way better than it was back when I started in 06. You know what I mean? We're getting people that are getting better educated. This, all these things that CrossFit offers for them before they can become a coach, like all these specialty seminars and stuff like that. So I think definitely the coaching has gotten a lot better. Um, and then we're seeing a lot of weird, also a lot of weird like hybrid stuff like is that really crossfit or is that like a boot camp you know what i mean yeah. that kind of a thing um i always trip like you're just gonna wonder when somebody tells me they have like 200 something members but they only have 2,000 square feet and i'm like or 300 members whatever their membership is i'm like what are your classes like in that you know what i mean like it can't be a lot of barbell work i don't know i don't know if you're in the are you in the affiliate owner groups any of those on facebook oh yeah i'm in too many of them yeah, yeah and, and there's somebody was saying they had like 200 something members and they have an 800 square foot crossfit gym i was like that's like the size that's smaller than my lobby and yeah I'm like, unless they have a lot of outdoor space yeah, but not, yeah. you're probably not having to spend a lot of money on barbells uh, yeah it's just a that's you're basically probably running a boot camp or tabata style class in in those scenarios but you you were part of that original staff I assume you've had to take your, your level one or, or two a couple of times since to maintain that. Have you seen a change in the, in the seminars over the years as well? Oh, it's so much more professional now. You know what I mean? Um, I remember going to uh, a level one in, in Canada at Patterson's place. Patterson's yeah. Place. yeah. <laughs> and he took me out. He's like, Oh, we won't be out very long. And then, the next day I was like didn't get in until like four o'clock in the morning and like you know you're hungover coaching or teaching the level one it was all bad it's just so much more professional now because I mean it has to be because they have the test you know what I mean and it's you know certified and all that so I was very impressed um I think like at first I was upset that I had to go and take the level one again you know it's like that's a whole weekend right um but it's it doesn't matter like 
there's the material is very like distinct what they need to cover but i still think everyone has their own way of presenting it so like the programming lecture i, I didn't hear that wasn't the way that i heard the programming lecture but i forget who it was who was teaching it but it was great you know what i mean so that's, that's what's cool about level one you gonna when you gotta go at least you're always gonna learn so, a little something you know what i mean and the test is so goddamn hard <laughs> dude i skipped the first four questions i literally was like oh my god i don't know the answer to this and then me and china were in a competition because the first time that we took it they gave you your results right she missed she didn't miss any and i missed one so i was like oh all right whatever well now they can't give you the results but they could tell me if we were tied or not or, or who beat the other person so we ended up uh tying this time i don't know what we got wrong but we were the same not that you have a com competitive relationship with your wife. <laughs> Not in the slightest, right? <laughs> so, so what if, if you were to give any advice to someone listening to improve as a CrossFit coach, what would it be? Seek out other coaches. I mean, go to any CrossFit gym when you travel and see what they do. Like, you just can't be closed-minded about what you do. You know what I mean? Um, I, like, China and I have been super, super fortunate that, you know, she's been able we've been able to train with some of the best people in the business you know what i mean and get you know taught cool things from them she she was weightlifting at catalyst athletics well wellborn was her coach for a while um so we are just really fortunate to just pick the brains of people that are so smart in this industry you know what i mean it, isn't it funny though you bring up those names and i know them catalyst and wellborn but I'm sure people listening don't, you know, that was a big part of the culture. I mean, Greg Everett was huge for a mm. period of time. And, you know, Josh Wellborn, who started CrossFit football, and he was all in every second counts. It's, it's funny that in 12, 15 years, how much can change, how much yeah. can stay the same. But, you know, but people don't know a lot of that, the, the, you know, the, the CrossFit history, if you will. Yeah. I think there's just so much out there that's, that offer now there's all these people doing their own specialty seminars or courses and you know whether they're still a part of crossfit or not you know they they're doing the research and they're learning and why not go and learn from them you know what i mean i mean everything in everything in coaching is just something copied from somebody else right everything's been invented and done everything. you're not going to really do anything unique so might as well go and get as much shit that you can copy as possible <laughs> It's what we say all the time. I mean, anything we're teaching you, we've stolen from somebody else. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I've never asked this question, I don't think, to a guest. But you're so old school that I want to know, if you had to create Mount Rushmore of CrossFit, who are the four people that would be on it? Uh, I think, well, obviously Greg, right? Yeah. And then, I don't know. Man, that's kind of, I mean, what? what do you want athletes or you want like it's, it's entirely up to you i say with people that inspired me in crossfit would be glassman um probably the guy that i learned the most of anybody was wellborn so him Whew. then i put bosman up there he's, yeah he's a smart dude too he's very smart yeah, and then just for shits and giggles, I just put myself up there. <laughs> <laughs> so people are going to be there like, Boz, well-born coach. Who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, so you, you bring up Josh, and for the, for the listeners, you know, old school cross football. I th what's his – I forget his company now. I think it might be Power Athlete. Yes, Power Athlete HQ. Power Athlete HQ. There's a classic workout called Cal Su. Mm, oh, have you ever done it? So I, I, my story is I attempted it. It's, so for the listeners, it's you have to accumulate 100 thrusters at 135, but at the top of every minute, five burpees. Right. So we see this. We were following CrossFit football back in like probably 2009, 10, whenever it was huge, and it comes up, we all get demolished. And I was like, I need to be able to do that workout. And then over the next few months, I did a 95, 115, and then finally completed it at 135. And if you search my name in CrossFit, I think it was CrossFit. I don't know if it's still there, but I had wrote a letter to Josh because I was or to Wellborn because I was like, so it meant so much that I was able to finish it. I mean, I'm, no, I'm like 
135 pounds. So did, what was your experience with that workout? And if, if you've never tested cow suey, you got to go try that. out. Yeah, my for the first time I did, I did it by myself, but it was back when I, I was following CrossFit football too. And I was recording all my, all my workouts, which is a, another good thing for somebody who wants to coach. Make sure you coach, like to coach yourself, self-coach. I would always record and then watch them. And I think that one's posted on Vimeo or something, my first ever attempt at Calcio. <laughs> I just remember there were two whole minutes where I didn't do a thruster. <laughs> <laughs> you just did the burpees. Like, you had to do the <laughs> I even think, not going to lie, I think one of those minutes, I didn't even do the burpees. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a horrible experience. And the only other times I've done it since then have been uh, in Hawaii, on the point of when we're in Hawaii in the winter. Oh. Well, is that like just something you guys do, like that Kalsu in Hawaii for any reason? I was just we always just pick out at least one day where we do some terrible heinous workout. Have you ever done Sam Dancer Skittles? I've, I've not. What's that? Okay, this it's worse than Kalsu, my opinion. Right, it's a bag of Skittles, a regular bag of Skittles, and just gotta Google it, Sam Dancer Skittles, and then every color has a rep is represented with some movement that you have to do like red was two muscle ups you know what i mean or and you have to eat one skittle out of the bag you pull one skittle out of the bag until the entire bag is gone and if you get like two colors in a if you get the same color in a row twice then there's a penalty for that it's, it's horrible it's uh, like well over an hour of just pure agony like the deadlift at 315 like three reps or something so i mean it's horrible I will check that out, but actually, you just reminded me. You were part of the In and Out Fran, weren't you? Um, was that you okay. on that video? I don't think so. Okay, there I was a. I remember. There was that old Fran video where they were eating In and Out Burger in between rounds. That wasn't. Yeah, I definitely not. Know. Okay, so I was just thinking of food workouts, but uh, I will definitely check out Sam Dancer Skittles. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty heinous. Well, other than getting ready potentially for the next open any other future plans for for freddie camacho uh, no nah, i've been uh i'm cycling i still want to get into some kind of cycle racing i don't know what but like uh, the crit you're referring to like yeah. the crit from that was last no or even like a, even like a time trial or something like that i just it also has always been competitive my whole life i want to do something competitive you know what i mean so you saw some of the athletes go down in that yeah what are you doing to make sure that doesn't happen to you? I, I don't think that you can. I mean, like, you know what I mean? I'm still getting comfortable going to it. Like, I don't, you know, if I, a tire loses traction momentarily, I still like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I kind of have an understanding of being on two wheels and look where you want to go. And all that. I mean, I was a motorcycle cop for three years. You know what I mean? So, um, but still definitely getting comfortable. Like, I just got a, I just got a mountain bike. So, took that up in the, some trail riding. Uh, recently for the first time and you know I think that that'll help get a lot more comfortable on the two wheels on the road also learn and play new sports that's, yep, that's where it's that's where it's at people yeah forget about that line they spend all the time in the gym and forget about the learn and putting the putting their fitness to use now I'm like hey I may not be the fastest cyclist but I want to be the biggest so most muscular. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> yeah, you will definitely be one of the biggest cyclists in, in that race, whatever race you are a part of. Well, it's been a pleasure chatting, and I'll hopefully see you in Madison, right? You'll be cheering on China. Hey, I'm working the medical staff this year. You're working this year. I'll be judging. So we are all anxious to see what that will look like, you know, with yeah. hundreds of competitors coming in. We'll, we'll see what, what happens. Yeah, it's going to be definitely very different this year. Well, as someone that was there from date from the first year to now this one, what's your opinion? Um, I don't, you know, I don't really think I can have an opinion. I think that the it's still eventually going to weed. Obviously, we're trying to find the fittest, the fittest in the world, right? And it's definitely going to happen. I, I don't, I don't want to make any opinion or what I think is going to happen because I clearly have no idea, and I don't think anybody does. So. Uh, I'm going into it open-minded. I mean, I'm a spectator of it this year. My wife's not competing individually, and they're only taking teams from sanctionals, so there's not even going to be as many teams this year. Um, but as far as the individual side of it goes, I'm going into it with an uh, open mind. You know what I mean? Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think that's something that gets overlooked. It's like the goal is to crown the fittest on earth, and we all got to play in the open. Uh -huh. 
but people lose their mind when it's like, you're not who this is for at the end of the day, right? This yeah. is for, this is for the yeah. Frasers and the, yeah, and the best in the world. We just, you know, I always make the analogy, I train jujitsu, but I'm not, I don't want to fight uh, Connor in a cage. Well, I do want that payday, but you know, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? That's not why I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you out there. Tell your wife, you know, good luck. I judged her. I think I judged her in the total last year. Oh, and okay, cool. I think she was looking over to the stands at you and she would kind of get the numbers from you. And she, I, you know, it was a very short time. And she was like, I don't know how to make that weight. And I was like, throw the fives on, throw the two. And like, you know, yeah. luckily I can do that quick, you know, barbell maths in my head while she was like, thank you. And then she would just lift these crazy weights. She was looking at her coach. She wasn't looking at me. Because she <laughs> looks at me. You can see it in videos where she looks at me and I tell her to do something. And she just shakes her head no. <laughs> Waves it off. Waves it off. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was fun to judge her. And she did great in that workout. But I will see both of you out in Madison. And it was great chatting with you. And I'll, of course, shout out to Good For You CrossFit and Freddie. And thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me, man. Take it easy. You too. All right.